Light is a lifeline for much of the living world. Lizards seek out cracks in the shade. Flowers stretch towards window panes. And we ourselves awaken with the dawn. We know that light affects us physically. Too much can burn our skin. Too little and we stumble. But we also know that deeper still, light holds sway over our emotions and well-being. Let's say when you are at home and you are shaving yourself in the morning and you are impacted by a greenish, low quality light, then it's not a good way to start the day. Lighting can affect our mood and our well-being. So uh, lighting, we rely on daylight to, to synchronize our daily rhythms of sleep and wake cycle. Good lighting can really uh, lift our mood and put us in a really good place. That makes us maybe work better, uh, a bit harder, a bit more proficiently. It means the children are able to learn more efficiently at school. It's the same as if you go to a restaurant, you're not going to want harsh overhead lighting. You're going to want something warm and cosy. The lighting plays a really important role in making sure that you've created the right atmosphere. Atmosphere, a provocative word conjuring seascapes and mountaintops. Yet lighting designers are concerned with showcasing human achievements in similarly inspired ways, using light to bring vitality to cities around the world. Good lighting could be something that is related to the people that lives in the city. Not only putting light in the streets just to be visible, but this visibility has to have a, maybe a sequence, uh, an understanding of the space. It gives you the possibility to see where you are, or where, where I am, or where I am going to. Lighting of public spaces and, and civic areas can really bring a city to life. Um, when we did the Night of Heritage Light project at Ironbridge, we really brought that community together. We had uh, a colour changing scheme and we had children racing across the bridge to see if they could get to the other side before it changed colour. Cities now understand that they have to have their own image. Their own image. And this image shouldn't be only by sunlight. It could be possible to also have a, a night uh, skyline image. And this would improve the security, the orientation, the presence, the identity, the legacy of the city by itself. The ideal city in terms of lighting um, is probably a city where lighting is beautiful, lighting is useful, lighting is sustainable. It's also a, a city that takes into account the citizens in terms of the lighting projects and that builds those lighting projects and the lighting master plans for the citizens. In Spain, for example, for a years, the decades, uh, the, the lighting was um, in, in the streets for the cars. Most of the politicians, engineers, uh, lighting designers, they think uh, that the lighting in urban space must be uniform. And now the trend is, is changing because um, in the cities there's more streets that are for pedestrians. Pedestrians is a, 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 another uh, speed, another point of view. So we now in the lighting process in urban space we're focused in the pedestrians, not in the cars. In Barcelona, for example, Cardona helped design innovative street lamps that integrate LED technology with motion detectors to spotlight pedestrians' paths at night. By shutting off city lights when travelers were not in the vicinity, Barcelona has cut its power consumption by 30%. In collaborations like this between cities and lighting designers, everyone benefits. One of the best ways to um, develop lighting projects and lighting plans or lighting master plans uh, for the cities is to consider working in partnership. The cities um, lead the process and they, they started by putting together a pilot group maybe of, of the most important stakeholders around the city 
uh, together with the lighting designer. The lighting designer is the expert who will uh, give the concept, uh, give the philosophy of the project. In Teruel, Spain, Cardona and his colleagues leveraged their expertise to elegantly feature the historic city's heritage while avoiding modern trappings. Plaza del Torico is in Teruel. It's a very small city in, in Spain. It's around, uh, I think it's uh, 50,000 uh, people. And uh, the thing in this area is because they have uh, a lot of heritage. Uh, the, the facades are uh, very beautiful, very old. So we try to do a special lighting design without putting poles in the, the square, just lighting the facades and make this kind of uh, low resolution screen in the pavement with different pieces of LED. This city by itself speaks and tells us stories and tells us something more than only visibility. And this has been a major uh, commitment now among all the cities in the world. Lighting could be a tool to, to, change, uh, to change the world, to, to, to have some urban, uh, sustainable, uh, social, cultural, economic uh, development um, through the technologies, through the science, through art. Art is a, is a very uh, important aspect that can move people and I think if we uh, put art and science together in the various aspects of, of light but also in many many more aspects of uh, social life then we can, uh, we, we can make a change. I think that light is related to so many disciplines. Light is not only the visual phenomena, it's related to the state of mind, it's related to the humor, the psychology, history. So in that case, it's not only this kind of a straight film. It has a lot of uh, sequences and scenes. I've always said that light is the universal pacifier. It gives you peace or relation between everything. And we are always following the light. Light is always uh, trying to tell us where to be. And so we follow it. Light is leading civic leaders to a beautiful and creative future all around the globe. Light is integral to nourishing new life. Revitalizing efforts are now joining the world round, a united endeavor of peace to better the common spaces that so many call home.